What's going on guys and welcome back to part 17. In this part we're going to pick up from where we left off in the last episode. So basically in this part we're going to continue working on the user profile. So without further ado let's just get started. So first off I noticed that the section stack here we are um, constraining that to the bottom anchor of one of the arranged of views. So basically this is not required so we can just um, remove this and assign it to the bottom anchor of the section stack. And also we're just going to give that a constant of negative four to move it in the upper direction for four uh, points which is going to be equivalent to the height anchor and last but not least let's just go back to the profile view controller and at the part robot we are initializing the header so let's just uh, search for that so yes this is the header view I think that's it so we're just going to increase that to 390 points so I think this is just going to fix the issue we are having with the profile header, which uh, it's basically an interference between the first tweet and the header itself. So as you can see here, that's my timeline. And if I went to the uh, profile header over here, I can see here there is a clear separation between the header and the indicator and the first tweet, as you can see here. All right, so that looks okay. All right, now let's just go back to the profile view controller. And basically, as you can see here, we're using a view model, but we are initializing the view model here inside the view controller. We want actually to pass this view model from outside whenever we are initializing this profile view controller. So we can just remove this two curly braces and this equal and uh, basically assign a view model of type a profile view controller and that is just going to require us to define our initializer for that so our initializer is just going to take a view model of a type profile view model and basically we're just going to assign that to the view model over here so basically whenever we are going to initialize a new profile view controller we're just going to pass in the view model itself all right awesome and now the view controller is just going to complain because it needs to require the other initializer with it get uh, coder. So basically, this is the kind of initializer that you're going to be using if this view controller is just going to be initialized using a nip file or a storyboard. But this that's not the case. So in order to remove this error really quick, we can just type coder and add this one over here so that basically that's going to be the required initializer and we're just going to add a fatal error over here if this something wrong with initializing the view controller all right and as you can see here it is still complaining that a super init is not called on the old passes before returning the initializer so basically we can just remove this error by typing super dot init and passing here nil and nil so as you can see here, the view controller has been initialized successfully. All right, so basically this is just going to complain because in the home view controller where we are initializing this view controller, we're not passing in the, um, the view model yet. So as you can see here, we can just bypass that by initializing the view model over here. So let view model is just going to be a profile view model and we can pass that down over here all right so let's just hit command r to build and run to test if that is working actually and i think it's just going to work the same so we are fetching the tweet in the home um, timeline we're just going to talk a lot more about how to fetch tweets from users that we are actually following uh, that's um, that's for later, but let's just go to the profile view controller and as you can see here we are fetching um, The user creation date the display name and the username. So that is working correctly. All right so right now what we want to do is just to um, Import or basically fetch the same um, Tweets that we are fetching on the timeline over here as it, as we as we discussed. Yes, we're just going to uh, dive a little bit more into how to get uh, the tweets from the users you're currently following but the, from the profile perspective I only want to fetch my own tweets All right, so that's fairly easy so how do we do it so we can just go to the profile view controller and we're just going to um, 
change something pretty quick over here. So as you can see here, we're fetching the user whenever the view is appearing or basically at the view will appear method. So we can just move that to uh, the profile or basically the view load method. And we can just get rid of that as well. All right. And um, inside the retrieve user, basically after we retrieve the user, we want to fetch these tweets. So let's just initialize this tweet or basically uh, write this tweet from the beginning. So basically I'm just going to write um, fetch um, profile tweets or basically fetch user tweets, fetch user tweets. And we can do that by accessing the data manager singleton and over here so there's a collection user yeah retrieve tweets this is just going to be retrieved by the user id and we have the user id already since we're just going to be calling this function from here after um fetching the user so we can just say something like guard let user is equals to user else return and here we can just pass in the user id let me just sync over this. So the completion, um, maybe we can just log an error if there is any. So let's just write if case um, failure, let error, and we can just, oh, let me just make sure to write error correctly. All right, and here we can just say something like print and error dot localized description and over here as i can see we are retrieving the array of tweets so let me just capture weak self over here and uh, have the reference for the tweets self dot tweets we're just going to create this variable right here and assign that to this and here we can just store this subscription into our subscription set all right and here it's just going to complain because we haven't yet initialize the tweets variable which is going to be of a type array of tweets it's going to be empty for now all right so once the user has been fetched we're just going to um, um yeah once the user has been fetched we're just going to get the tweets for that user as well all right so let's just go back to the profile view controller and inside the binding of views, we're just going to uh, listen if we have retrieved any tweets. So view model dot dollar sign tweets, and we're just going to sync over that. We're not interested in the um, the current value of tweets right now, but whenever we fetch new tweets, we just want to update our table view. Um, so we can just say profile table view dot reload data and we can just um, grab that into an async uh, dispatch queue main so that we um, th we avoid any error uh, of updating the, uh, the, the the profile table view controller on the main thread and we're just going to um, capture weak self over here as well and store that subscription into our subscription set all right and um, let me just go down here where is it yeah basically we are hard coding four cells we want to update that dynamically based on the number of tweets inside our uh, view model so basically this is just going to be changed to view model tweets count and over here we can just configure our table view cell uh, using the configure function as you can see here it takes um, being, uh, it, it, this this cell actually gets configured by a display name, username, tweet text content, and an avatar path for our user. So we can just retrieve the tweet using uh, basically a view model dot um, where, where was it? Yeah, tweets. We're just going to access the index path of the following row, and over here we can just say um, tweet dot um this play name it's just going to be fetched from the author and here tweet dot author dot username tweet dot uh tweet content and over here we're just going to get the tweet dot author not author id but the author and add the avatar path all right so i think that's it so we just need to um hit command r to build and run this and see if we have retrieved 
our uh, profile tweet successfully. All right, so um, the timeline is working fine. And as you can see here, we have fetched the uh, tweets for our profile as well. So maybe we can just try to add more tweets over here. So uh, maybe this is uh, my second tweet and hit tweet. And as you can see here, um, yeah, it, it shows up in here. This is my second tweet that uh, works correctly. Um, yeah, and if we went to the uh, the profile, it is uh, over here as well. Okay, awesome. Uh, what else do we want to change in regards of our uh, profile? So basically, um, uh, in, a, in, a, in, in the next episode, we're just going to be working on searching for other users and be able to follow them. So um, in order for that to be able to work correctly, we just need to set up our follow button over here. And as you can see, the follow button is not just going to be a static view. Basically, if we are looking into our profile, we don't have to uh, basically uh, have a button to follow ourselves. That's not valid. Uh, but if we are actually viewing a profile that we haven't been following yet, then sure, this button should be configured as a follow. And if this user is already inside our following list, this button should be configured as unfollow and actions should be taken accordingly. So basically, let's just go and um, and add that profile uh, button. I'm sorry, this follow button over here. So I think it's just going to be inside of the profile table view header. And let's just go up in here and let's just define that button. All right, so private let follow button. This is going to be a type a UI button. All right, our anonymous closure pattern and then let button is just going to be UI button and set that type to system so that whenever you tap on the button, you see some feedback that, that shows up on the screen. All right, since we're just going to be using uh, normal constraints, so we just need to set this um, enormous attribute to false button dot set title maybe set title for now so that we can see if the button is actually showing correctly so this is not just going to be um, added here by default uh, because we're just going to be having like a different um i don't know like different a different uh configuration for each state of the button so here as you can see it's just going to be normal button dot set background on oh, no, not this one set title color I think this is just going to be a white for normal as well. So button dot background color, that is just going to be Twitter blue. We have defined this color before. And uh, yeah, button dot um, layer dot, no, 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 just uh, button dot clips to bounce, just going to be uh, true so that we can round that button. Button dot layer dot uh, corner radius, let me set that to 20. And let me just return that button over here. All right. The other thing that we need to do is to add that button actually to our view. So add some view and add this follow button. And inside of the uh, configure constraints, we just need to configure the constraints for that button as well. So um, let me just say here, follow button constraints. And let me just define that as an array. So follow button dot training anchor. We just need to set that uh, basically like um, from the training anchor and give that a padding of 20 points from the right. Follow button. All right. So let me just align that with the username over here. So um, center y dot going to be constrained with the username label dot center y right so follow button give that a width maybe of 90 points so follow button dot width anchor is just going to be uh an equal to constant of 90 points give that a height as well so follow button dot height anchor this is going to be constrained to maybe 40 so that we can have that round um button right so follow button constraints, we just need to activate these constraints over here and build and run to see if that is actually working correctly. All right. 
So let's just go to the profile. And as you can see here, there is a follow button. And as you can see here, it gives you a feedback whenever you tap on that button. That looks amazing. Okay. So the other thing that we want to add is basically a function that controls the behavior or the, um, the, uh, the shape of the button according to the type of the profile. All right, so um, let's just um, add these functions over here. So private func configure button as followed. So basically, this is just going to be the case if you are following actually this. So if you're following this user and um, it is um, already presented inside uh, your profile as a user being followed. So we want to change the style of that button. So follow button dot set title. And here we're just going to uh, add the unfollow action because if you're already following this user, the only thing that you can do uh, is to actually unfollow this user. All right. Follow button dot uh, background color. And let me just set that to uh, a system background color i want that to match the uh the profile header so basically if you're in a light mode it's just going to be white if in our um if, uh, simulator is set to the dark mode it's just going to be black all right and here we want to set a layer dot uh border width to two follow button dot uh layer dot border color and set that to a ui color dot twitter blue cg color and uh, i think that's it really um we want to set other functions so private func um configure button as unfollowed right and over here let me just say follow button dot set title just going to be the exact opposite so follow just going to be uh, yeah the unfollow just going to be follow follow button dot background color this is just going to be uh the same as um twitter blue color all right um yeah i think that's it we just need to uh remove the border uh color as well so follow button dot layer dot border color and this is just going to be um ui dot color clear dot cg color all right um, we want to test that. So um, yeah, for the follow button itself, we no longer need to have this. Um, and yeah, we just need to set the title color as well. So inside the, um, the configure as uh, unfollow. So basically this is just uh, the, the follow state. So we just need to say follow button dot set title color. And this is just going to be Twitter blue dot normal. And basically this is going to be the exact same opposite over here. So basically this is, is just going to be white. And we want to test that. So inside of our init function, uh, we want to configure button um, as followed so that we can test if the button looks um, okay. All right, let me just see. Let me just go to um, the profile. And as you can see here, this is just going to be in case of you are uh, already following this profile. And uh, yeah, maybe just test the other one over here. So configure button as unfollowed. So the only action that we're going to be ab able to see is to actually follow the user. So basically, yeah, that's it. And um, Basically, we, if, if we are just looking at our profile, we're just going to hide that or maybe add another uh, button in the future, maybe like edit profile, changing your username, changing your display name, something like this. So um, I think that looks okay. Um, so I think that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed watching this tutorial, please hit that like a button and consider subscribing to my channel. And if you have any co uh, comment, just leave them in the comment section down below. So basically that was our happy coding and stay safe.